now we're going to talk about the paint colors that we need to paint our Blight Rivet Warrior. A lot of these are the same as on the Ally Warrior and recognize the German Gray, the Intermediate Blue, the Highlight U.S. Marine Corps. There's a few new ones. We've got some Deep Yellow, some Earth, and this is a GW color over here, again a Deneb Stone. There, there's other kind of colors that you could use also. This is not set in stone, it's just, ha, uh, no pun intended. And over here, you recognize these two colors that we use to paint uh, most of the flesh tone on the Ally Warrior. So next step, we're going to talk about the brushes. Now here we have our brushes. These are basically the same ones we used on the last one. Start off over here with that number four filbert. It's a number four flat, same brand, it's a little bit of difference. These rounded corners can make it uh, much easier to do that uh, that damp brushing as opposed to the dry brushing. And we are back to that number eight round. Here's one of those distressed liner brushes that we used for our glazes on the last miniature. And then over here, we've got a few Winsor Newton brushes. This is more of a liner brush right here. Again, really good for the details like the the icons, the eyes, little things like that. So now we'll get talking about the primer that we used. So unlike the Ally Warrior, which we primed with the NATO Green, this time around we know we wanted to more, have more of a gray feel. So instead of going white or black, I went right down the middle and I mixed some of the white Vallejo primer with the black. Again, it's the, another advantage of the brush-on primers. You can mix them, match them, get a color that you want. So that means we're just about ready to go. There's one more thing I wanted to talk about before we got into the painting. There were a lot of questions from the first video about what, what are those sticks that I'm using. Now, this is a basic dowel rod, just a piece of wood. I've cut these into small strips, easy to handle. You can see I just drew a little hole in there, and I can put my pin, and that sets the miniature in there really nice. And what that does is it lets me rest my hand like this on my other hand, and let it see how that stabilizes my hand. It really, really works. And you've got these little, little details. So instead of this, uh, worrying about my hand shaking, well. Instead, it's rock solid. This does not move. And I can rotate around and do whatever I need to do. Much, much steadier. And if, if you're someone like me that paints many, many hours every day, this is a little more ergonomic. Your hand won't get sore as fast. Now, there is another method. If you don't have dowel rods or you don't like to pin your miniatures this way, this is another method I used. I have actually an old used-up paint jar. And on the top of it is a sheet of metal. This is, it's, it's magnetized. You want to make sure, or you use another magnet. On the bottom of the miniature, on the base, these are refrigerator magnets. And it's just strong enough, especially since this guy's resin. You can stick it on there. And now just like we did with our other stick, I'm going to put my hand here, this hand here, and I can still paint this way. So I can still have a pretty good access to all the miniature. Now, for me, I, I prefer to be able to grip my miniature with, with the whole stick instead of holding it out like this. But sometimes, you can't always have the base separate. So this is another, another little solution to that problem. Now it's time for the painting. We have all of our colors laid out on the palette. We've got our grays to our U.S. Marine Corps to the stone. Then we've got some of our brass gold colors over here in our flesh tone. Just like the last time, we're going to start with the helmet and the jacket. Since this is already primed gray, we're going to start out with this darker gray, not do it in all places. We're going to just... Here we go. There actually would be a little bit of shadow. And just like as you saw with the sample one, this gray is going to end up as a warmer gray. That's that's what the Deneb stone is for. 
I start out like this. We're just gonna get some of that primer covered. Just like the last time, we want to get as much of the surface covered with color as possible. Okay, we're gonna mix a little bit of this. Again, just like the last time, that's what the palette lets us do. Instead of just dipping out of each bottle, all the palette, all the colors are out here, and I can just grab and mix and mix. And there's no percent. Oh, how much of this did I mix together with it? Well, it, it's right here. It's all out on the palette. So a slightly lighter color. And this number four, filbert or flat, whichever one you like to use, really. Let's this work fast enough to the point where we can almost do wet into wet. So remember the paint here, we had the darker gray, it's a little bit wet here, we have a slightly lighter color. And since that's still wet, we've worked fast. We had a chance to actually do a little wet and well. Let's see if we can keep that going. So we'll put a little more gray in there. Go to the top of the helmet. And even here, it's almost wet into wet because we're working pretty fast. These are light strokes to it. It's almost like I'm dry brushing, but there's paint on this brush. And obviously we have wet paint on the miniature. So it, it's, it's, it's more controlled, I suppose and a dry brush, and certainly with more paint. When we get to the jacket part, we don't have to be quite as careful, because you have more of these rough rough edges, like the, the shoulder here, the arm. One of the reasons we want to do the warmer gray, well, not only do we want it to look like some of the artwork that you see, but all the grays on, on these grenades, well, that's going to be a cooler color. And we want a different, we're going to have gray on gray. We want a difference, at uh, least in the, in the contrast of values, light and dark, but also if we can get a contrast in warm versus cool. Now, that might make a little bit more sense later, actually. But I just want to throw that out there right now. All right, back to this mix. And if it ever gets too light, you can always go back into it, but since we're going to do some of that weathering and rust effects, if there's a part of the helmet that you just, ah, I don't really like how that blended well. Yeah, there, there's a paint chip there, there's a rust streak there. So here we go, look at this, we're going to use the edge of that brush. We're just going to sweep along here, and look, we've now we've kind of defined this edge. A little bit easier than having to, with the small brush, work your way up to that edge. And don't be afraid, you know, we're, we're kind of working dark to light, but you can go the other way too. It's perfectly fine to go just the opposite way. We just put dark colors back in here. Now, unlike the mix that we used on the Ally Soldier, where we mixed yellow in with the green, and mostly this UMC with our grays, that's where this is going to come in. And see right away, that already makes this a bit warmer. Let's show an example here. So that's going to be a cooler green. But this, without it getting yellow, be a little bit warmer. So let's get to our helmet and our jacket. The helmet is also a little bit darker than the jacket, so this might be just about as light as we're going to go. And it's like last time we used our thumb. That's perfectly fine here. Let's say I want to just do something like that. This is a really, really large, broad surface. It kind of makes that work a little bit better. It doesn't always necessarily work on tiny surfaces. You can't get your finger in there. And now let's get this part of the helmet right here. Again, this this feel really see it has that nice chisel edge on it. 
so I can use it almost like a liner brush at this stage. There we go. And out of the jacket. Another advantage of having the colors out on the panel like this is I can see where I've gone. I can see what my darkest was, see what the light is. I can compare here instead of having to necessarily experiment on the miniature. So I have a little better idea of what my color is, where it's come from, how I've made it just by just by looking at my palette. I'll work in these lighter colors in on the jacket. And if every so often you need to get into your water to make it uh, flow a little bit better, that's no problem. I want this part of the jacket to be a little bit lighter than this part back here. A little bit of contrast on the front part of them. Okay, sleeves here. Shoulders are going to catch a little more light. And then with the top of the coat versus the bottom of the coat. I'll take this another step later. Top of the helmet if it's too light. Go back. And you can I mean, even this is an even lighter brush stroke, not anywhere near as heavy as those first brush strokes. So I'm use front of the helmet here. We want dark, dark, we want this light. So, and we go here, back to the darker color. I don't know if you just saw what I did there with the thumb. Excess paint. Take it off with the thumb. I call it the thumb palette. Back to almost, almost straight denim stone. There, there's a few, there's a, probably a few Reaper colors you could substitute for that. I'm sure there's a, there's a Vallejo or whatever other color there is. It's, it, it's sort of a light gray with just a little bit of a tan feel to it. And that gives just enough to lighten up this gray and keep it warmer like we've been talking about. Okay, and you're just about done with the initial layers of gray. So the next thing we're going to do is put some flesh tone on him. And I've shifted the palette over a little bit so that we get a good look at our flesh tone color here. Just like with the other ally warrior, you don't want to take this really bright pink color and do that. That's just going to be too bright. So what did we do last time? We took some of the gray and mixed that in with that brown rose. There you go. Vallejo brown rose mixed with the intermediate blue. Much more gray. And we tone that down. Now we're going to do the whole face. We'll do his, his little little hands. He has, he's got a beard, so now he really could have some definite 5 o'clock shadow. Okay, his hands. And just like an ally warrior, I want this to be the lighter portion and this to stay dark. So this almost over here is going to stay right where we've left it there. And we'll go, since we, again, this is the advantage of the palette. When we want to lighten this up or go more pure, all we do is just pull a little more of this brown rose into that mixture. And we'll kind of start in the center of the face, around the mouth, the chin, under the eyes. And the one thing we will do is our little ears, little ears hands here. I don't think he's wearing gloves. He 
might be. You could always paint them that way. But we're going to paint them for this time around in flesh tone colors. Now we get almost to a pure brown rose. But we're going to also start to think about how do we tone that down. I'm just going to mix a little bit of this ice yellow. So it's, it's almost the same lightness, but it's not quite not quite so bright. And right to the center of the face where we want the lightest colors to be. And the mouth is, don't worry about the, the mustache here, the eyebrows, the beard, that, that obviously happens later. To the hands. And more white. Yellow, ice yellow, sorry. I always think of it as a white because I'd almost never use a pure white. Even if I was highlighting something that was blue, I might even use that color, especially on a sword, because when you do the super highlights in a warm against the cool color, might even do that here, you get a nice spectral effect. See, we're working so fast, and we're just working on one miniature, almost could do a little wet into it. So now we've got our piece color mostly in there, good to go. And while we're here, we're going to put down the, the basic colors on some of this brass, gold, whatever you might want it to be. We're going to start off with some of the earth color. Mix a tiny bit of the gray, just a tiny bit in there. And this is more of a base coat here, just to put this down. And you can see that looked really, really dark on the palette. Oh, good. Look, look, at, uh, look what happens when it's next to the darker gray. All of a sudden, that dark tan doesn't seem quite so dark. And this, this is why it's important to put down as many of the colors as you can, as soon as you can. Because one color really does influence the next. Now, if you're more comfortable using a brush like this number eight round instead of the flat, well, that, that's fine. You, you're not, you don't have to use this exact brush, you use really what's more comfortable for you. For me, this was a little more comfortable because you can almost see, instead of just painting it, the angle of the brush, and I'm just pulling it along. Little bar along the top here. And then again, we're going to do a little bit darker shading on some of these parts, but we're also going to highlight this lighter. But there's there's our basic shade right there. I'm just going to throw a little bit here just to remind me that these are going to get a little bit of a light. Okay. So we've got that basic down. Now how do we want to lighten this? There's a few ways we could lighten it. We could take the yellow and mix that in. And I'll do a little gradation for you, you can see. So there's that kind of a gradation. Let's clean the brush. Now what happens if we take that same, same tan and we lighten it with the green. Two really, really different colors. Whichever one you want is fine. Now let's see what happens with this mix. So we're going to grab this. This is basically a little bit of non-metallic metal here. Not much, not much, just a tiny bit. And all it is is on this section. So yeah, we, we chose to go with the yellow here to lighten this up. And you can see that's much, much warmer. crossbar here. This is the advantage of the filbert. And you can see I was able to shade this much more quickly. Let's see if I had one of these liner brushes. Now this is, I used to work with almost exclusively these liner brushes. And then I just started to like these bigger brushes. It's I was more comfortable with that because well, I used to be a watercolor artist and I used to use the bigger brushes. So we're going to have more and more of the yellow we focus in on the center, just like we did when we were painting the grays. And with this, 
on the top. We're going to focus lighter colors here and here and a little bit along this edge. So again, here and here's where the lightest colors are going to be. Now we have to do that little section there. and I'm going to actually pull out the liner brush to do this little piece right there. And at this point, water can help really thin down the paint, make it flow better. There is flow improver. I think I use a Reaper flow improver sometimes, and especially on details or, or some of those paint colors that are a little bit thicker than others, you know, like, like this. And these colors are a little bit thicker. These colors here are a little bit, uh, they're just not quite as opaque, a little more transparent. Okay. So back to this. And all we're going to do is just lighten that portion there. And work along this edge because we want this edge to pick up some light. And a couple of other colors we're going to toss in here. Our ice yellow. Mix it with the yellow. Here's a little highlight edge here. So you can see how now how, how that looked so light. And now next to this, it doesn't look so light anymore. So it, it's, it's one of these things where everything is relative. It's just good to have something to compare it to. So we're going to do our little highlight on the top. As you can see right away, we've created a nice bright focused highlight and that's something that's really important when you do the non-metallic metals you have to kind of you have to create those spectral highlights like that yourself now we can go back to a bigger brush we're just going to do a few more lights on this and this and now get our these little buttons here on the corners a little bit on the back and that mostly takes care of our helmet for now I'm gonna add a introduce a few more colors so that we can do our grenades our beards and, and some of this uh, little trim on the outfit here. So that's our next step. So here's the three new colors that we added. This is the Vallejo chocolate brown. This is the cavalry red, cavalry brown here, and we've got a flat red. So this is what we're going to use to kind of paint the edge of our uh, end of our grenades, and this for the hair for the trim. We're back to Filbert, and we'll start out with the Cavalry Brown. Even mix a little bit of the chocolate brown with it. And here we go to have the end of the grenade. These grenades. And I'll just leave those go for right now. Grab this brown. Mix it with a tiny bit of the gray and hair. This sideburns here. Eyebrows. And if this mixture starts to get more towards the red, well, that's uh, that's no problem. I I just wanted a brownish hair color. It doesn't have to be bluish brown, whatever. I'm good with that, even if it's a little bit more towards the red. All right, his other eyebrow. And 
And all of a sudden our darker flesh cut doesn't look quite so dark because now we have an even darker color on top of that. Back to the brown for a trim. And again, you don't have to use this brush. You could use this number eight round. This one's seen a little bit of use. The point's not as perfect as it was, but I try not to use those brushes when I'm putting down these initial coats because it is, it's rough on those brushes. So we are working away around the trim, the boots. There's really not much to them. So we just throw a little brown there. Tiny bit on the stock. Back to this belt, the trim, back to the trim. And there. So there's our brown. And again, look at this. I mean, I got it on the hand. I can take my thumb, finger, wipe it away. And there's really no problem. Oh, it almost just looks like shading. If you work quickly enough, you can either wipe it away with your hand or you can take some water and another brush and just dab it away because you're really not going to hurt your previous layer of paint. All right, we need to just put the eyeballs in there. Just want to make sure we locate those. So here we are into that ice yellow. This is where we can use our hand to steady. And there we go. The other. There we go. So we've established our eyes are going to be Tiny highlight on the ear while I have this color. Even along the top here, since I've got my little brush. Again, this this is a Windsor Newton. You don't have to use Windsor Newtons if you don't want to. They they are definitely pricier brushes. Okay, now our next stage is going to be back to the red on our grenades because that brown is just about dry enough. There we go. Now depending how light you want your reds to be, Maybe you just want these to be a deeper, darker red. I think we might do that this time around. Some colors will take a little bit longer to dry. So while that red dries for a little bit, put a little bit of reflected light down here. We are going to work on this part of the grenades. Fortunately, that gray is still wet enough to work with. Now this is the cooler gray versus the warm gray. Now this is going to be shaded much darker when we do our glazing, so don't panic. It's look, it looks way, way too light. Well, it is way too light because we are going to shade it darker later. And let's get to this. I think this is a site up here. So let's grab some of our marine core sea foam and we're going to pick out some lights there. 
there. On the top part. So we can see we've already kind of established where our lights and darks are going to go on these grenades. Stock. And I'm going to mix in a little of the ice yellow. And we're still waiting for the red to dress. So what I'm going to do is see along this edge. This is really not a highlight. It seemed like on the artwork this was a white painted line here. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to work my way around, all the way around the grenade. Same thing on these extra ones here. And I don't want this to be pure white. You can you can see there's still a color here. There's still some gray, there's still some green. Maybe for the brightest, brightest highlight. We'll let the yellow seep in there, but okay, here we go. Final little lights on these. And on his sight up here, you can see how that pulls that out. We almost can go back to our red. Now, to lighten reds and have them not turn to pink, one way to do that is to mix something warm, like our yellow. So let's see what that looks like. So that's more of a red and less pink. You can take the thumb. Spread that out. Same thing on this side. On these grenades, and I'm going to focus. I'm focusing more on the upper half of these. So it's all about that light and dark transition. So more to the yellow. And if I need more, I'm going to throw out some more yellow. There we go. You can see how this has wandered from all the way around here, all the way to more of a highlight color. And since this is still pretty wet, you can almost do a little bit of wet into wet. See I'm carrying a little bit of a highlight line this way. On the extra ones. And if I want a really bright highlight on the end, there we go. And along the top. Now you can use, obviously, much smaller brushes than I did. I'm just, I'm comfortable using the bigger brushes. So you know, if you wanted to use the smaller one. The other thing I love about these is I can, I can spin this miniature any way I need to go. Especially this way. You know, when we need to get under here, I can just spin this around and get underneath here. He's attached to the base really hard to get at some of this stuff. So, we are going to then work on this trim, and work on the beard, and then eventually that'll set us up for some of our darker shading. Back to our warrior. Now this, I think you saw when I worked on the alloy warrior, this is brown liner from Reaper. It's sort of a very intense, very thin down paint. It's not quite like a glaze, because the glaze is it's just a more transparent. This, it's really nice, dark, and you can see that it just it really, it's, it's so thin down, you can place thin little streaks like this. That's why I like to use it for things, oh, like the eyes. Let's, let's put that there first. So we're going to work on 
this eye. Steady ourselves. Put in the iris, and now over the top, the eyelid. And on these guys, we have to it's, we have to paint that in. I think on, on normal miniatures, you won't have to do that, but on these, you sort of have to paint that in. So the other eye, looking this way, I want to make sure that this one matches where the other one is, and there we go. Half of the beard, we can take that same brown liner, mix it in with our chocolate brown. How nice and transparent that is. It's it's sort of a very thick glaze. And look at how we almost outline the beard. We're actually shading this darker. Sideburns, beard, whatever. Here's his mustache, the mouth, and his eyebrows. Same thing over here. Okay. We'll come back and we're going to put some highlights on all this. At least it establishes where that dark color is going to be. Now I want to get this edge a little better under underneath his head, where the neck is. That's the brown liner mixed with the chocolate brown. There we go. Now the chocolate brown. That's going to be thinned down. Hopefully you can see that. On the palette, see how thin that is. Again, it's the, the advantage of working on the palette. Take some of that thin. And over here on the opposite side of where this bright highlight is, a very thinly a little bit of shading. Underneath where our, shadow, our light color is. Gonna go into the shadow brown, or the, yes, the brown liner and the chocolate brown. It is a shadow, it's made of brown. There we go. Same thing over here in these corners. The brown liner, I'm going to use that to clean up these edges on the grenades. And it's going to set the red, that edge, really nice into that white line. So there's our first one, the extra ones. Grenades taken care of. And now for that trim, we want it to be a little darker. So here we go. We've got brown liner, chocolate brown mixed together. You can see that's nice and liquid. Now for that underside, remember I showed you how you can get the underside. Well, let's get back to a big brush. Let's put enough of the brown liner out there. There we go. And now all we have to do is turn this upside down. And taken care of. Instead of, I'm going to try to somehow get my brush in there between the base and that. Well, we didn't have to worry about that. Underside of the helmet, same thing. I'm going to set this up so you can see it. Now we don't have to worry about the underside of the helmet anymore. Takes care of that.
When we turn this around and see if we find we did something like this, we can either leave that as some kind of weathering effect or we just take our finger and make it go away. Same thing over here. Or take some of your water and wipe it away. So we've got some of our initial shadow colors in here. Now what we want to do, we want to shade some of this stuff darker, like these grenades, like his jacket. I'll do that in the next step. I'm going to bring out some glazes. Now it's time for the glazes. We have our sort of beat up glazing brush. Used to be a liner brush. You can see there's been a lot of glazing done with these. Now we have our glazes. You don't have to necessarily use these. These are just the ones I pulled out. This is Nuln Oil. We have a Reichland Flesh Shade, a Drakenhof Nightshade, and an Agrex Earth Shade laid out this way. So the Nuln Oil, since that's, see how warm that is, that's what we're going to use to shade a lot of the coat. See the Drakenhof is a little more blue, especially Next to that, well, that's what we're going to use on these stalks of the grenades. So let's start off with the known oil. And we're going to do the coat, just like on the other Ally Warrior. It's not about taking a giant brush and slathering it with glaze. No, this is very controlled. That's what we save these kind of brushes for. I'm going to stop when I get to the grenades. I'm going to try and leave my highlights. If I want to do this too, I can even rub off the glaze with my finger. Sometimes I do that intentionally, especially on rougher surfaces like this, or feathers on a bird, or bark on a tree or tree man. I want this to be darker in here, so those lights stick out. You can see there's whole swaths of this coat that I'm just leaving alone. Just kind of painting in the shadow areas. This in here, another little Area of shadow, end of the sleeve. And over the trim on the bottom of the jacket because we want that to be a dark brown. Remember you can always go back over and add lights to that. I'm going to add a little bit of this flesh shade to the known oil so I can do a little more dark shading on the hair and the Agrax earth shade I'll add that to that and this way I can do a little bit of shading on the reds of the grenades and here we go the nightshade. Now you don't always have to use a straight glaze. You can also water it down. I do this a lot. So I can get the same glaze. But this is what it's like out of the bottle. And this is probably almost 80% water here. To start out with I'm going to go a little bit almost halfway. and start to put some shadows. So the reason I'm not going but this right on top of my lights is I don't want to have to paint those back. But since I've already, this is almost a watercolor type thing, some of the glaze is already here and the light, I'm going to take some of the darker glaze and I'm going to let those two mix together by themselves. It's, it's, it's gravity, basically. You get, this is a little watercolor trick. 
The whole thing has some water on it, has a little bit of glaze. Took the darker glaze, added it to it. Now we've got the, the launcher itself. Want to work on the stock, put some darks in there. And this is where I, I might just go ahead and almost use the pure glaze. Again, this is this is the great thing about having these little sticks. I can turn this thing upside down, get at it however I need. And here's that, that little watercolor trick again to just let gravity do its thing. Now sometimes when you do something like that, or well, you want gravity to do its thing, well, either sit there and hold it, or you can make what I've done, and that's a little foam, piece of foam that has some holes in it, and you're gonna set this thing down in there and let it, just let it sit and let it dry. Uh, we don't wanna wait that long. We have, we have miniature painting to do. All right, back to that. Here I want to actually mix some of that bluish glaze with the black. Get some of these really deep shadow colors. Now that we've done all this, we are going to go back and we are going to try and put a few lights into the jacket. Okay, on to highlighting the jacket. We've got our gray, and we've got that denim stone. Now there's a little trick that I like to show. That's actually some of our glaze color. Well, guess what? I'm gonna mix it with some of our denim stone. And now we're going to bring back some of those highlights. And it's going to go along the edges here. Decided to use the liner brush this time. As I put down these lighter colors, all of a sudden the brown of the pouches and everything else, well that looks a little bit lighter. I like to do this. This actually makes the paint stay wet a little bit longer also. There's there's something about the, the glazes that actually slows down the drying time and that can be an advantage especially when you're you want a lot of these guys, and you want to keep that color from drying out. And it naturally thins this down. Instead of me having to always reach for water, now I have kind of a pre-thin paint. And almost a straight den of stone for some of the lightest colors. You can also mix paint with the brown liner. Here we got some glaze. And I'm going to work on this trim a little bit. And we have to lighten our hair. That's where the den of stone comes in. We mix that with some of that chocolate brown. And we're going to throw some lights here on the sideburns. Sorry, I keep calling it a beard. That's really sideburns. On the eyebrows. And a little on the mustache. 
you can see big difference there. We're going to actually leave this side mostly in shadow. You don't have to be too busy because we've got so much going on with the stock of the grenade launcher. Make sure I have enough highlights there. Go back into the chocolate brown and we're going to work on the belt and pouches because that's uh, looks like they've dried a little bit and now we can put some lights there. So I'm going to take some of the U.S. Marine Corps. Mix that with the brown. And here we have some lighter colors. And these little pouches here. Top of the trim. The back of the trim. Pull this out. There we go. And all it takes is that little bit. We don't have to paint the whole thing in. We've already shaded this darker. We don't have to paint all the way around. We just have to. This is where we want our lighter color to be. Same thing up here. Like so. Now one thing we want to do is maybe put a little bit of weathering on our helmet. So we're going to grab the colors we need to do for that. Alright, we are at the stage where we're going to do a little bit of weathering, a little bit of rust, maybe a little bit of paint chips. What do we put out on the palette? Now we went back to our brown liner, put that on the palette, and just like we did on the other ally this this old foundation paint Kelthan brown why did I use that one of the reasons I like it so much as you see when I mix it with water this pigment almost starts to break down a little bit starts to kind of separate that is actually to our advantage when we want to do rust because it's almost like a reverse glaze we are glazing a lighter color onto a darker color if we want to do some weathering first we're going to take our darkest the uh, brown liner and now we're going to do a few paint chips so here's our example we have these paint chips we're going to do the same thing we're going to put a few of those and i'm actually going to concentrate a few of those near the edge of this strip here because what that does a nice little contrast there creates a bit of a center of interest On the back here, a few along this edge, on this side, and I think we're going to have some along here, if you can see that. These don't have to be exactly perfect, because we're going to put some rust over them, we're going to highlight the edges of them. The most important thing is, is to have them be irregular. You don't want five or six dots all the same color. If this one is too similar, we just reduce it and like that you can see I have kind of a bigger dot smaller dot and then smaller dots and you can almost a little constellation of dots here you don't want them to be the same size you want to vary the size as much as possible you want to get this little shadow line and we can even use a few paint chips there we're even going to put a few paint chips on these extra grenades. We didn't do that on the sample one. Now let's do that this time. So this way, each guy maybe can look a little bit different. So there we go, some paint chips. While we have that out, I'm going to do a little restoration of some shadow lines here. And now, we have our Kothan Brown for our rust. We start out with the water down. And see, it's, it's just like, remember when I was doing the glazes and the shadows, this is sort of the same thing. What's nice is just like the glazes, if it's too intense in there, I can just wipe it away. All along this back edge here. 
And because it's thinned down, see how much darker that is versus had I just done that. Hopefully you can see that past the reflections of the lights. So that's why I start. You can even mix it with some of these glazes that we've still got on the palette. And let's have some rust streaks where the paint's been chipped away. A little bit of exposed paint up here. And once that's out, look, we can take the brush, we can move it around, manipulate it. We can even put a little bit of rust on the grenades. Maybe they've laid around in the mud just a little too long. There we go. So now we've got some nice subtle rust effects. Now as that dries a little bit, I'm going to pull out a few more highlights. So go back to our U.S. Marine Corps. And I'm going to highlight few things on this grenade launcher here is that the stock just along the edge and along here on his sleeve on this sleeve mixing it with my chocolate brown do a few little highlights. Sometimes you just have to wait for paint to dry so that you can do those highlights. As you can see on the palette, a lot of the colors are still still wet. Not a lot of dry stuff out on the palette here, which is great because I can go back and forth, work with it as I need to. I don't have to yeah, I have to remember, well, what, what did I mix? What did I mix? It's all right there. All right there for me to use. Now we wanted to put maybe a rank insignia on the shoulders. I'm going to grab some of the yellow. Let it be toned down, and we'll just do a little private stripe there. Go back to that brown liner. Again, we can steady, a million ways we can steady our hands with this dowel rod. Do a little outline on that. Same thing over here. It's it's good. It disappeared. Well, now it brings it right out. And I may not do the entire edge either. I may leave that top edge and just do it here and here just to give you a hint that there is that insignia there. And what I can I can. Play around. Actually, look at this. We've got uh, our blue glaze. We're going to mix that in with the U.S. Marine Corps. And I'm going to work on our grenade launchers here a little bit. Put in a little, there we go, a little bit of light there. Now you can take this really as far as you want to take it. Maybe you just want a tabletop. Maybe you want a golden demon. Here, this is just to give you an idea of how you can paint this. Some of the colors that were used, some of the techniques you can try out. And as we put our last few little highlights on our rust, you have a pretty good idea now of how to go about painting your Blight Rivet Warrior.